Are you an undergraduate or postgraduate student? Do you work as an m and consultant or you are a research practitioner? Do you find research methods such an abstract unit in the course of your study or in the course of your work? And this is because you cannot relate the research theory you learn or you learned in class with practice then this channel is for you. I, Dr. Lydia Wabogo, welcomes you to this channel, which is a class on research methods. In this class, we discuss everything social science research from understanding the research discipline, research philosophy, elements of scientific research, and the methodologies of conducting research. Welcome to this channel as we explore this discipline called research. Welcome to our today's lesson where we are going to discuss simple random sampling designs. This is one of the designs under random probability or quantitative sampling techniques. In our previous lesson, we have explained the meaning of random sampling technique and we have said that random sampling technique which is also called probability or quantitative sampling technique is where you allow each and every member of the population the chance to be included in the sample and that is why we use the word probability meaning Every person is given the chance to be part of the sample and the selection is random, hence the use of the word random. We have also discussed when we use random sampling, why we use random sampling techniques and how to generate a table of random numbers using the internet. Note that we have talked about generation of random numbers because you cannot select a sample using this design without the use of random numbers. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to, one, explain the meaning of simple random sampling design, two, State the steps followed when using simple random sampling design and explain the strength and limitations of simple random sampling design. So let us begin by explaining what is a simple random sample. In statistics, a simple random sample is a group of subjects that are chosen from a large group and this group of subject is selected randomly. Please refer to lesson 28 so that you remind yourself the definition of a subject, an element, a parameter and a statistic. So when we talk about simple random sampling design, we are talking about that design where each and every member of the population has an equal chance of being selected to be in the sample. That means that each subject from the population is chosen randomly and the selection is entirely by chance. Meaning that each subject has the same probability of being chosen at any stage during the sampling process. Using this figure, the sample is drawn from the population and each and every member of the population has an equal chance of being selected. We shall now move to discuss the steps that are followed when you are using simple random sampling. It is important 
to remind ourselves that before you employ any sampling design, you must have selected the sample size because it is when you have the sample size that you can now draw using a sampling design the number that you require for your study. So we are making an assumption that we have already drawn the sample size. So the steps that we follow are step one, develop the sampling frame. So we will still use the example where our population is 500 and we have determined our sample size to be 217. I hope no one is asking how did we determine this sample size. In lesson 29, we discussed the methods of the strategies that we employ to determine the sample size. So when the population is 500, Using Kredi and Morgan table, the sample size selected is 217. Once we have now our population and the sample size, we need to ensure that we have numbered our population from number 1 to 500. This is what we call our sampling frame. So the first step is to develop the sampling frame where we have numbered our elements from 1 to 500. Step 2 is to generate 217 random numbers using the procedure that we discussed in lesson 30. So the next slide shows us the 217 random numbers that have been generated. And that is the table of random numbers. So step 3 is to now draw the 217 subjects or respondents from the sampling frame. These are now the respondents who will take part in this study. So using the table of random numbers on slide 7, then some of the respondents we shall use are number 259, 221, number 77, 412, 336, 180, 109, 243, 147, number 79, ETC. So what we are doing with the random numbers is that the table of random numbers has allowed us to select 217. And since we have listed our sampling frame, it means that the person who is number 259 becomes part of the sample. The person who is number 221 becomes part of the sample. The one who is number 77 is part of the sample, etc., as has been shown on slide 7. Now, what are the strengths of simple random sampling? One is that it is easy to use. So, simple random is easy to use, especially when you have an accurate sampling frame. Simple random sampling also lacks bias because every member of the population is given a chance to be uh, selected. It is also a simple method that can be used by even those researchers who are not very experienced in the research work. But it does not mean that this design has no limitations. One, sometimes it is not easy to access a sampling frame that is precise and accurate like we discussed in lesson 27. Number two, there is a likelihood of a sampling error occurring if the sample does not add up accurately reflecting the population it is supposed to represent. This method can be time consuming, especially where the population is large and diverse. And when the time is consumed, it therefore means the costs are also likely to be high. And finally, Though we are saying that a simple random sampling is intended to be an unbiased approach, sample selection bias can sometimes occur. This is when the sample is not inclusive enough and does not represent the total population or it is skewed 
whereby you have not selected each and every member of the population. And with that, we have come to the end of this lesson. In this lesson, we have discussed simple random sampling technique. We have said that this technique is used when every member of the population has an equal chance of being selected to be part of the sample. We have also discussed the steps that you follow when using simple random sampling technique and we have finally discussed the strength and limitations of simple random sampling. In our next lesson, we shall discuss the second random sampling technique which is stratified random sampling design. Thank you for your time in this lesson. Feel free to ask any question regarding this lesson on the comment section. Do not forget to subscribe to this channel and please like and share this video with your friends. See you in our next lesson as we discuss stratified random sampling design.